everyone, and welcome to How to Prepare Your Patient Case Presentation. These are my fourth year pharmacy colleagues, Alicia Harvey, Ariel Zlega, and Anil Jacob, and I'm Janelle Rodriguez, and we'll be explaining to you how to present and prepare a patient case presentation. So first off, a patient case presentation is very similar to the SOAP format. And just so you know, not every single patient case presentation is going to be this, the same. They may not all fit the same mold, but it is important for you to know that there is a lot of room for flexibility. So throughout this presentation, we'll be showing you how to prepare each part of the patient case, and we'll have examples to follow. So we'll start off with the title page. So the title of your presentation should have what your presentation is all about, so very descriptive about your patient case. And if you're going to use a picture, make sure it's not too large, because you don't want it to be the focus of your audience. You want your audience to focus mostly on your title. Next, for the objectives, your objectives are the most important parts of your presentation, so the highlights that you want your audience to go home with. Now there's certain words that you could include and certain words that you should avoid. Some of these words to include are, for instance, explain, evaluate, analyze, or propose. And words to avoid would be like certain things like understand, study, or learn. And if you want more information on what objectives to include in your presentation, you can go to Park University Writing Center and the link is available here. Now this is an example of what your objective slide will look like. And we have included some of those words that you can include in your objectives. For instance, identify, propose, and analyze. And next we'll have Anil, he'll be showing to you how to present the patient. In going along with presenting the patient, you want to get as much background information as possible. So some of the information that you want to include is our demographics, so how old the patient is, the patient's sex, and how much the patient weighs. What's also of importance is their primary complaint, or otherwise the chief complaint. What is the primary reason that the patient came to the institution? You also want to look at their past medical history, so if the, is the patient hypertensive or do they have diabetes? Social history is going to include other information like are they abusing alcohol or are they on any illicit drugs? And it may also include their living situation, so if the patient's homeless or do they live in a long-term care facility? Home medications and allergies are very important, again, because you do not want to report uh, any prescriptions that the patient might be allergic to. If you can get their current or past inpatient medication history, this may be pertinent to the problem as a lot of problems may be drug-induced. Upon admission, a ER physician or uh, attending will do a physical exam and their findings may be pertinent to your report. You do not, however, want to include any extraneous information such as the examples we have here that the patient has two turtles or that the patient drinks orange juice every morning. When coming up with an assessment plan, you want to prioritize medical problems in the order of medical urgency or life-threatening situations first. But going along with that, you want to include any pertinent lab values or state any clinical or laboratory markers that may help uh, support your assessment plan. So in our example for septicemia, we listed fevers, positive cultures, and hypotension. The treatment plan is going to coincide with the previous assessment plan that you made, except that it's going to have specific instructions on how to actually treat the problem. Again, you want to remember to prioritize the treatment plan in order of medical urgency or whichever life-threatening situa situation comes first. You'll see here that we listed uh, the specific antibiotic to treat the problem and monitoring parameters. Here we have a full treatment plan, and you'll notice here that problem number one is the most urgent and life-threatening situation over chronic kidney disease and chronic anemia. You'll also notice that each uh, problem has its specific instructions on how the team went about treating the problem. I'll now introduce Alicia Harvey, who's going to discuss disease states. And now we get to discuss the disease state. In this particular slide, which will encompass three to four slides, you will discuss the disease state overall separate from your patient. In this particular section, for example, utilizing the same example as septicemia, you would discuss the pathophysiology and epidemiology of uh, septicemia. You'd also discuss, discuss prognosis and diagnostic tools to diagnose a patient with uh, septicemia. Very important findings to include when you're presenting the disease overall. It's very important for you to list the causes of the disease, risk factors for the disease, signs and symptoms, and laboratory um, parameters, and also patient presentation when they do clinically have this particular condition. And it's very important that when you are presenting the disease overall, and again, I said septicemia, that you do strongly put 
drug recommendation therapy and it's targeted or empiric therapy for patients with that particular disease. It's very important for you to put the route, the frequency and the duration of treatment. Now you've discussed the disease and now you take it back to the patient. And this is your return back to the patient. Some people might call it back to patient X. And in this particular section, it might encompass again two to three slides. And within taking it back to the patient, you would discuss what is happening now with the patient. If your original assessment and plan was day one or day two, you're taking it back to the patient, which is right now, would be day three, four, or five, wherever in the plan you would like to present. Also, it's very important that for you to stress moving forward, what will we do with this patient? In this particular section again, it's also important to know what are clinical signs of improvement. You would need to put what parameters you would need. For example, if the patient was hypotensive, you put, okay, the blood pressure has returned to normal. The patient is alert times three. Certain parameters, clinic, clinical parameters that others can utilize to assess if your patient is doing better. Also, it's very important as far as we're looking at antibiotics, it, will the patient remain on the original antibiotic they were started on, the empiric treatment, or is it time, or will they de-escalate to a more targeted therapy? Also, we would look at adverse events, complications. We would look at are there microbiology results, did blood cultures come back for the patient at that particular time? So you would present all this information in your returning back to the patient slide. And then lastly, you have a slide for critique of drug therapy. And that will be a standalone slide where you would clinically put, you would put your assessment of the overall care for your patient. Do you agree or do you disagree? It's very important if you do disagree that you substantiate that information with clinical findings. And we do recommend guidelines or randomized control studies or peer to peer in peer to peer journals so that you can um, excuse me, verify the rationale for why you disagree. So moving forward to conclusion. Your conclusion in your take home slides are next after your critique of the plan. In that you basically summarize the care for your patient and you summarize the disease and be sure to include two to five strong pearls that you'd like the audience to leave with in regards to your disease and your patients. So I turn it over to Aria. Now that we looked at how to present a patient, how to discuss a disease state, and how to critique a patient's therapy, let's go over some important tips that can help you make your per presentation as perfect as possible. Let's talk about font. What font do we look for and what font do we prefer? Arial and Courier fonts are preferred and Times New Roman is not preferred because it doesn't look as professional. Going along with the font, being consistent with your formatting is extremely important as well. So if you use one color background, keep it the same throughout the whole presentation. Keep your bullets consistent as well. Pick good contrasting colors in your backgrounds and in your font. So a dark blue background with a yellow white font makes it very easy for the audience to view your presentation. The next point is not to leave hangers at the end of your sentences. So a hanger is when you leave one word on a line. Either move that word up to the line before or put another word next to that single word. That way it's not all alone. Keep your presentation simple and free of distractions. Don't add any designs to your slides or any pictures that don't add anything to your presentation. Prepare for a 20 minute presentation and allow ample time for questions at the end of the presentation. Include dates so that the audience can follow the timeline and can see the clinical course of your patient. Include references throughout your presentation or at the end of your presentation or you can actually do both. You can have it both throughout your presentation and at the end of your presentation. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to be with your slides, the less you're going to have to look at the screen. The, more, the, the easier you're going to be able to answer questions. Another tool you can use is to record yourself. That will really help you highlight your weaknesses and how you can work on that to make sure you present perfectly. Repeat any questions that the audience asks you to ensure that you fully understand the question being asked as well as other audience members have a chance to hear the question if they didn't have a chance to. Maintain good eye contact with your audience as well as avoiding any distracting body movements. Make sure you pronounce words properly. Thoroughly understand and be able to evaluate your patient's case. This will help you answer any questions that the audience might have 
as well as any curveball questions that come about. Remember, don't be afraid to be creative, but always remember to stay professional. So that concludes our patient case presentation. On behalf of my colleagues, we all thank you for listening to our presentation.